you're new in town or just new to this whole podcast thing, you're tuning in to Law by Night, the podcast that discusses all things vampiric with no fear of breaching the masquerade. In this episode, we shall unravel the mysteries behind the origins, motives, and culture of an obscure bloodline in the world of darkness. This episode will focus on the Frankensteins, the Blood Brothers. Loneliness and isolation are two words that describe a shocking amount of individuals in our world, especially with today's youth and elderly, and that is just referring to the mortal livestock. I suspect kindred of your age feel just as loathsome, cut off from the world you once knew. I can sympathise with that, you know. You may well be annoying as a Toreador, but I understand your woes. Even in the company of your own coterie, it is easy to feel alienated and the ugly duckling, as it were. Some feel this more than others, of course. The Nosferatu are known to be rather accepting of each of their own, supporting the fresh fledglings through their metamorphosis, for example, but you know we are not social creatures. Sentinel gargoyles, such as Colin here, are bred to be more sociable, struggling to do anything without a companion. It is rather fortunate that Colin is rather cute and adorable. I am not cute! If you say that, one more time, we'll try and get that Neonate to give me head packs or cuddles. I will rip your fucking head off, you push twat! No, 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 of course not, Colin. I would never do something so humiliating to you. <laughs> anyway, gargoyles are an odd bunch of kindred, for they are the one breed of vampire that were created by another, rather than a natural descendant of one. Well, one of two breeds, actually. The Blood Brothers were created by Tremere Anti-Tribu, which says all you need to know about these canines. They are a bloodline of vampires that should not be. They are almost exclusively Sabbat and are therefore not humane in ideology or biology. They have no interest in the masquerade or their humanity, only created so that the Sword of Cain had something that passed off as remotely human. And yet, despite this, they have probably one of the most inhumane disciplines, but we will get onto that when we get to it. Now, as of this conversation, it is most commonly believed that the Blood Brothers are not that old, only existing for a few decades, if that. I mentioned previously that they are the result of the Tremere Anti-Tribu, which is the most accepted theory. Many of the Anti-Tribu were there during the creation of the Gargoyles, the original vampiric foot soldier to serve a sect or clan. Such Tremere remembered the mistakes they made with the Rockheads. The first error was giving the Gargoyle the ability to breed, to embrace others into their fold. The Blood Brothers cannot. They are infertile in all ways. Should they try to create their own child, uh, the mortal simply dies. The other mistake is connected to the first in a way. By giving the gargoyles the ability to embrace, it creates a small sense of freedom and free will, neither of which the Tremere wanted with their stone slaves. Granted, this may have been an intentional flaw planted by Fastania, but the Anti-Tribu did not want history to repeat itself here. With these flaws in mind, it would make total sense that the Blood Brothers are the morbid perfection of the original gargoyle idea. But alas, it is not that simple. It never is. You see, the Blood Brothers possess fortitude and potence which would not come as a surprise to you. It is their unique discipline, Sanguinis, which is a truly unholy power that was granted to them by Zemitsi Koldons, who are also argued to be their creators. It is a curious variation of vicissitude that allows vampires to combine parts of their bodies, loan them to others within their bloodline, and coordinate their appendages, as well as sharing a hive mind and organs to heal each other. I had read once that it was discovered that the discipline can be learned instinctually by Kaitiv, and a pair of Duskborn somehow learned it under the tutelage of Dr. Douglas Netchurch of Clan Malkavian. He informed me once that a single vampire would not be able to access it, that two or more vampires sharing a blood bond can make full use of the various powers, provided they possess knowledge of the discipline itself. But I digress. 
This swapping of bodies and internal plumbing could easily route the creation of the Blood Brothers back to some ancient Coldons. Some would argue further that, in actual fact, the Blood Brothers are the result of both Anti-Tribute and Coldons working together. Perhaps not at the same time, but one created the Canite and the other slapped the weird discipline and weakness onto it. This also makes sense to an extent, and I will merrily let you decide which one of these three variants is true. But what about the discipline itself? Or to be more precise, its name. It holds far more human qualities than the Samitsi would adopt. And Sanguine, the word that Sanguinus is derived from, is not a terribly clever name that the Tremere would conjure up. Well, there is a third origin story. This one is not as well known, and many do not believe this to be remotely true to our grand canon, but it is something worth knowing all the same. According to this alternative take, the Blood Brothers were the result of a Toreador anti-tribute by the name of Lorenzo Tokimedo that hailed from Uruguay during the Victorian Age. He had a great love for a man who was said to remind Lorenzo of a man he once loved. It's an impressive feat for sure, as it takes quite a lot to move the heart of a pervert, but this charismatic man, this actor from across the seas, managed to be the point of obsession for this Toreador. Lorenzo wanted this foreigner, longing for the passions he once felt. The actor was said to sound like Lorenzo's former lover too. Lorenzo stalked the man's every movement, manipulating his very life, sometimes for the better, sometimes for the worse. It really depended on the mood of Lorenzo. Then one night, the Toreador could not take it anymore. He approached the man and offered him the embrace, as the Camarilla Kittred would, not forcefully and violently like the Sabbat are known for. You can only imagine what Lorenzo's pack would have done. I say that literally. You have never seen a betrayed Sabbat pack before. But anyway, to the surprise of literally no one, the man was appalled. Dead a lie, Lorenzo was surprised, mortified, you may say. This is where the anti-tribute suffix enters. Lorenzo went to work by speaking to a Samitsi contact of his by the name of Axel Dictric with a favour. Lorenzo would let the man flee from Uruguay with his acting troupe, directors, producers and so forth. Lorenzo, being an actor himself in his mortal youth, found his own actors and team, or perhaps he found the actor and his troupe ruling them with presence, I cannot say. Anyway, the Samitsi would sculpt the flesh of all of them to look like Lorenzo's forbidden desire, to have them all sound like the lover he could not have, surrounding himself in a wall of identical sound. Of course, vicissitude does not last forever, and neither do mortals. The solution here was to embrace them, which is done by either the Torrid or some Meatsy or some Tremere Anti-Tribute, if you allow me to revert to the previous narrative for a moment. All these individuals, looking and sounding like the original one, they now would never change, and Lorenzo's avant-garde art pieces were finished. But this embrace had a further impact on them, one that definitely does exist with the Blood Brothers of tonight. They have a shared consciousness. Their former lives completely obliterated according to their original creator anyway, but they share thoughts and feelings just as easily as they would do limbs and organs. Was it down to the Toreador's love, the might of vicissitude, or some bonkers ritual by the Tremere? It ultimately does not matter, for none of these new creatures wanted to turn back. These literal blood brothers wanted to exist as one gestalt unit. Now you may be of the mindset to believe that this is all horseshit, but if you take anything away from this, know the blood brothers get very agitated when they see each other as different. They obsess over their appearance, far more than any Toreador. And the tale does not end there, for Dictric got an idea. A terrifying thought to plant in the mind of the Sabat in Mexico City about this. The Vojt was already a thing, an idea almost as old as the clan Zemitsi itself, but there was no means for them to detach and add parts as and when desired, because that was just what the Sabat needed. Many of the Sabat were, and still are, disgusted by the existence of these Frankensteins, as it went against the very beliefs of the Sabat. The Blood Brothers do not fit Kane's image, so to speak, and they should not exist within the Sabbat. That said, the motion of those who followed the path of Cain was swatted away by many of the followers of the path of Metamorphosis, the Road of Sin and such. They thought this would be a wonderful opportunity to create a wonderful experiment. These Blood Brothers could be what the Sabbat needed to finally push back the Camarilla. In many places, 
It has worked wonders, as they are, in many ways, the literal Sword of Cain. That is all they are. The mortal beforehand is totally irrelevant. All that is needed is for the kind to meet the Sabbat on a bad night. The mortal is killed, stripped of everything, down to the last root of their hair, literally smooths over all their features and dumps them in a pen with up to ten others, ready for the ritual that Coldons and Warlocks used to create the Blood Brothers. The most recent incarnation of this ritual is titled Mirror of Blood. Many within the Sword of Cain deems this ritual hearsay, as it stands against the very definition of what it means to be a vampire. Naturally, the ones who perform this ritual see this as the pinnacle of blood sorcery. Whatever you may think, may we agree that it is a fucking dangerous and totally immoral practice. Keep this in mind as I describe to you this disgusting ritual. For this ritual, ten children are captured. Yes, children. They must be less than seven years old and contain the same blood type. They must have no diseases or genetic imperfections of any description. They are ghouled to a vampire who is intended to be disposable in some fashion. The Domitor pampers them as the Ritualist tortures them, breaking them down emotionally, physically and psychologically, so the only things that they trust are the Domitor and each other, with their very souls combining with the Domitor. It is during this state of spiritual tension that the torturing Ritualist kills the Domitor before killing the children as their minds are merged, as well as their memories. This, combined with the intense magic and the blood bond with their former Domitor, is now amplified, twisting the deceased into something else entirely. An unalterable and identical blood brothers. I did warn you that it was a disgusting ritual. If it makes you feel any better, it is not limited to children. Age is not a discriminatory factor, but I can see that is not helping you. Anyway, Groups of Frankensteins are called circles, who will stay in whatever poor excuse of a haven they are dumped in. As long as they live together, they do not care and will not argue or complain. I cannot say they do so happily because I am unsure whether they know what the word actually means. Their loyalty to the Sabbat is unlike any sort of blood bond, which is often seen as the strongest of bonds in our kind, but they usually lack any real intelligence. Or rather, they lack any real creative thinking or decision making, which can often be confused with intelligence or lack of thereof in this case. As a result, Blood Brothers are best suited for direct commands and as a surprise attack against the Camarilla, similar to how the Vodged are pointed in a direction before being let off its leash. Notice that is not the first comparison I have made to the horrendous constructs tonight, but I have done this for good reason. Some Sabbat domains do treat the Blood Brothers like their disgusting creations, holding them in pens or cages, turning the metaphorical dog leash into an actual one. Others induct them as true Sabbat, but this proposes an interesting question. Well, Several, actually, but they are all connected by this one fact. Just like the Slachter and the Vojd, there is nothing pleasant or natural regarding the Blood Brothers, and there is not a unified voice within the Sword of Cain that knows what to do with them and how to treat them. They are an incredibly weird bunch of Cainites, which is a title I adopt most… loosely. A small group of mortals, embraced into one, who could have the potential of being some of the most intelligent creatures of the night, what with their shared mind hive, but of course, they will never be, because they were not created to think and speculate. They were bred to hunt and destroy, to follow their masters until they are dead. They are no children of Cain, so does that make them heralds of Gehenna? Are they actual vampires, or are they just bestial revenants? Do they deserve the same rights as either of those? With the waning numbers of the Tremere Anti-Tribu, who are said to be the ones in control of the Frankensteins, are the Blood Brothers more dangerous than before, or do those old Coldens have something in their minds for these violent monstrosities? But that's just it, child. Whatever you think about any of these questions, whether you are an advocator for Blood Brother rights, or think that these familial fiends should stop going on rampages, Know that they are something entirely different. They are true Frankensteins, and that alone should cause you to quiver in fear. To be kept updated, follow the Law by Night VTM Twitter and Instagram pages to find out when we will upload each episode. You can also find out by subscribing to the YouTube channel and clicking on the little bell, as you'll be immediately notified when the latest episode is live. 
Until next time, farewell.